I'm Anil Kumar. In this video, I'm going to review a few concepts of domain and range for students who are taking functions and advanced functions. Uh, to begin with, we'll start with a very simple function y equals to 2 minus x, which is a linear function, and then modify it, make it square root function, cube root function, and reciprocal function and then see how domain and range changes. We'll take similar examples with the uh, quadratic functions and uh, different kinds of functions. So with the help of a couple of videos, I think we'll be in a position to understand domain range of functions uh, very easily. Let's begin with the very first function here, y equals to two minus x. I'll write domain and range in interval notation. Uh, let me first sketch this. So y equals to 2 minus x is, is a straight line with y intercept of 2 and uh, slope of minus 1. So you could draw a line kind of like this. Now this particular line will have y intercept of 2, slope of minus 1, if y is 0, x is 2. So, so the x-intercept is also 2. So that's kind of uh, the graph for the function y equals to 2 minus x. From the graph, you can easily write down domain range. As you know, lines don't have any restrictions on domain range. So x belongs to real numbers is the domain. And range is also x belongs to real numbers. In interval notation, we represent this as domain from minus infinity to plus infinity and range also from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? So that is in interval notation. Now let's look into the second function, which is y equals to square root of 2 minus x. Now, as you know, square root means that Within the square root, we should have non-negative. So 2 minus x should be non-negative. It could be 0. So that means that the domain is less than or equal to 2, right? Because after 2, this line, y value becomes negative, correct? So, so as x is greater than 2, we find that the value for 2 minus x becomes negative and therefore domain of square root function is restricted it is on the left side of 2 so we could say it is from minus infinity to 2 where 2 is included right so if i write x equals to 2 we get 2 minus 2 as 0 square root of 0 is 0 you could actually sketch this function as square root of 0 is 0, 1 is 1, and uh, uh, y value is 2 is slightly less, so kind of like this it is going to be, right? So, so let me just draw this like this. So that is kind of the square root function which we have, and we have sketched a line like this for, for the linear function, correct? Now let's look into cube root function. A cube root function has no restrictions on domain, right? Well, let me write down the range for the square root function. As you can see, range is greater than or equal to 0. So we could write this as 0 is included to infinity. Is it okay? You can never include infinity. So that becomes the range for square root function. For a cube root function, there is no restriction. X value could be anything. And therefore, the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range is what? Well, let me sketch this also for you. So at 1, cube root of 1 is 1. So this is a common point, And that is also a common point, right? So it is kind of like this. I mean, kind of like this, right? Symmetric, this would be 1 anyway. So that is how it is going to look like. Uh, this is not a horizontal asymptote. I should have drawn slightly upwards. So as you can see, 
range has no restrictions. Range is from minus infinity to plus infinity for the cube root function. Now let's see how to sketch the graph of 1 over 2 minus x and then write its domain range. So starting with the graph of 2 minus x, which was kind of like this. If I want to sketch reciprocal, reciprocal of 0 is not defined, so we'll have a vertical asymptote at 2. Right? Now, reciprocal of 1 is 1. So if this is 1, it is 1. So it is kind of like this. Reciprocal of positive numbers is positive. Reciprocal of negative numbers is negative. So we'll get this kind of a graph where the vertical asymptote is at 2. Right? This is at 1. This is 2. Right? And now from here, we can write that the domain is from minus infinity to 2. 2 is not included. Union 2 to infinity from 2 to infinity. Is it okay? So that becomes the domain. Range is any value but not 0. So range is also from minus infinity to 0, like from minus infinity to 0. That's an horizontal asymptote. And that is union or I should say from 0 to infinity. Is it okay? So that is how you can get domain range for these functions. Now I found domain range using graph, right? Sketching graph. It may not always be necessary or sometimes not simple enough to sketch graphs. We could also find it algebraically, okay? For example, if you're to find domain of square root function, we know 2 minus x should be non-negative. That is to say, let's do this. That is to say that 2 minus x should be greater than or equal to 0. Or we could take x on this side to say 2 is greater than or equal to x, right? So, so that gives you the domain which is x is less than or equal to 2, right? So for a square root function, you could write this domain less than or equal to 2 algebraically also. As you know, square root function is always positive and therefore, I mean non-negative, 0 to infinity is going to be its range, right? So that's to give you an idea that there is an option. We can always find domain range using graph or reasoning or sometimes algebraically as we showed here, right? I hope the concepts are clear to you. We also learned how to sketch reciprocal function from the function itself, right? Positive part has positive reciprocal, negative part has negative reciprocal. As the function increases, reciprocal decreases. As the function decreases, reciprocal increases. Do you see that? We are comparing with value 1. At 1, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Similarly, for minus 1, also the reciprocal is minus 1. So I hope that is a good review for understanding basic functions, linear, square root, cubic, and reciprocal, and also how to find the domain range. So we'll move on. We'll have some slightly more complicated functions in the next video and see how to find domain range of such functions. I'm Anil Kumar. Thanks for watching. You can always share and subscribe my videos. And if you like, you can put a thumbs up. Thank you and all the best.